Reactive training systems. Hi, I'm Mark Robb. Thanks for your interest in this video. I've been asked a number of times about deadlifting with a hook grip, so I decided to put this video together to help explain. First, let me put this into context so that you might see why I took a no retreat type attitude about changing over to hook grip after pulling with a mixed grip for most of 31 years and the circumstances leading up to that decision. In 2009, I suffered a complete distal bicep tendon rupture in my left arm. I later found out that this is a fairly common injury among strength athletes and pretty much always occurs on the side of the supinated hand. Fortunately, I was able to get it reattached within a few days of the injury. I wanted to continue training whatever and however I could, so a couple of weeks or so after the surgery, I was back in the gym doing, among other things, one arm deadlifting. My left arm was in a sling, and a powerlifter friend suggested that maybe I should consider learning hook grip so that I wouldn't have to worry about any more bicep tears. He had just recently torn his bicep as well, and in addition had been having trouble with a lat tear, both on the supinated hand side. So I started pulling lighter weight one-arm deadlifts with my good arm. I looked up one-arm deadlifts on the internet and found this video of Misha Kokliev doing exactly the same thing I was doing. He tore his about the same time and on the same arm. I thought it was amusing that powerlifters seem to think alike no matter what language they speak or where they live. He appears to be using a hook grip. Point is, I changed the hook grip because I felt it was necessary to prevent further injuries, not because I just wanted to try it out or because I was dropping deadlifts. Having pulled both mixed grip and hook grip, I feel that hook grip, at least for me, is somewhere between mixed grip and using straps as far as being able to hang on to heavy weights goes. Folks that are dropping deadlifts with a hook grip may not have their thumbs under the bar far enough. If hook grip still hurts, it may be because you have not allowed enough time to fully adapt to it. It may take months for the pain to go away to the point that you really don't notice it. I've never dropped a deadlift with hook grip unless it was because I was blacking out, which has happened a couple of times in meets. I missed a 678 pound deadlift third attempt at IPF Worlds in South Africa because I started to black out and I didn't want to drop it in front of the judges. This is how I do the hook grip deadlift or set up the hook grip. Uh, I'm not saying it's the only way to do it, it's most certainly not, I'm sure. As with a lot of things, the uh, devil's in the details on this, and so uh, you know I'm kind of a detailed person, so I uh, haven't had much trouble with it. Uh, first of all, as far as chalk goes, I think chalking is important. It's important to get the outside of your thumb right there, because as well as the rest of your hand because that's where your fingers are going to be gripping uh, your thumb. So it's probably more important than even with the, with the mixed grip. And then as far as hands go, um, this joint here needs to, you need to start with pivoting your thumb with, from this joint, not from this joint because if you pivot from that joint like that, it's not gonna go far enough. You need to get it over as far as possible uh, towards your, your little finger. Um, and the way I normally set it up is when you, well, think about it like this. If you, if you place your hand like this and you start pulling, see where my wrist is going? It's coming over in line with basically the uh, middle finger. So don't set your hook grip like this. Set it like that, 
where you're starting with your middle finger basically in line with your forearm. So uh, what I do is take, take the, the thumb and uh, push it down the back of the bar, which will push all the slack skin up into uh, this part of your hand. And that is so that when you do start pulling and the bar's pulling the other direction, it doesn't, there's some slack there and it doesn't tear your skin. Because uh, otherwise you'll get a, the, the skin will tear up in here somewhere. So start with your hand like that, run the bar down the back of your, down your thumb, get the slack up into this part. Um, you wanna get your thumb, as I said, from this joint as far that way as possible, and then wrap your fingers around uh, and get as much of your first and second finger and as much of your third finger onto the thumb as possible. So you're gonna end up with, with your hand in that position there. So you wanna set your thumb, wrap your fingers around and get as much of your third ring finger onto your thumb as possible. It, getting a third finger onto your thumb, I think is really important. Uh, when I first started this, I was getting two fingers onto my thumb and, I, and my grip was slipping. Uh, my good friend Rory Lasowski, who's now in New Jersey, uh, taught me to get that third ring finger onto my thumb. If you can only get, like I can only get half my, half my ring finger onto my thumb. That makes a huge difference. It might make the difference between uh, dropping a deadlift or not dropping a deadlift. Um, I think for me, just speaking personally myself, uh, I had pulled mixed grip for 30 some years uh, without issue, uh, but I'd only gone up to about 600 pounds, no grip problems. When I switched over to hook grip, uh, I would say personally for me, hook grip is, as far as being secure, somewhere between a mixed grip and actually using straps. Uh, that's my own personal opinion, but I know I can hold on more hook grip than, uh, than I can with a mixed grip. Another thing, little detail, uh, it helps a lot if you leave your thumbnails just a little bit long. Uh, again, it gives a little bit more for that third finger to wrap onto. Uh, and another thing that, uh, another detail Jeremy Hartman uh, uh, mentioned to me was, I guess when he, he was at the World Games, some of the Bulgarian lifters were actually using uh, nail repair cement under their thumbnail to build up the thumbnail so that they had more to grip onto. And uh, that, that third finger makes a huge difference. I get asked also uh, quite a bit about the, the pain factor. Um, basically, Yes, when you first start hook grip, there's, there's uh, basically if it doesn't hurt, you're not doing it right. If you're trying to do it and avoid pain, you're not gonna learn how to do it correctly. Uh, you basically have to just endure the pain. Um, you know, I started basically, I tore my bicep and I had one arm in a sling and started hook gripping, learning to hook grip with the other uh, arm and uh, so there wasn't any possibility for a mixed grip as far as that went and you know when I got my arm out of the swing and was able to get back to deadlift and I just picked up the hook grip in both hands um, there is an adaptation period the pain will lessen over the weeks 
I would say, I don't know, it might take two or three months before you finally get to the point where it's really not bothering you. Uh, for the last six years, I've been pulling hook grip. It's no more painful than mixed grip. Um, and so, you know, when I hear people uh, either dropping deadlifts or switching back to mixed grip from hook grip because, because of the pain factor, it just basically tells me that they have not completely gone through that ad adaptation period. At first, honest to God, it felt like it was going to rip my frickin' thumbs clear off. Uh, it hurt so bad. But um, that decreased fairly rapidly, and uh, now I really don't pay any attention to it at all. Other thing is, if it's not secure enough and, the grip, and your grip is slipping, chances are you don't have your thumb under the bar far enough. Uh, if you're trying to avoid pain, you're not gonna get your bar, thumb under the bar far enough. Uh, if you stick your thumb under the bar far enough, uh, it shouldn't, it, and get enough fingers onto it, it shouldn't slip. One thing I've also been asked about a number of times is any kind of long-term impact on my hands or thumbs from pulling hook grip. Uh, really haven't had much of anything except here lately I have been having a little bit of uh, possible arthritis starting in this thumb and this joint. So uh, what I've been doing lately is just pulling my warm-ups and up to my heavy sets and then uh, with the back off uh, volume work, uh, sometimes depending on my, how my thumbs are feeling, whatever, I'll just go ahead and use straps for those, for those volume work sets. But I always try to do the heavy stuff with the hook grip. Uh, it is a, a technique thing. It is something that requires practice. All right, so basically I put a, just a line here to kind of show how much of my thumb ends up under the bar or the bar actually laying on it, which is this port part right here. When I'm doing a lot of deadlifting uh, work, it's pretty clear line because that part of my thumb ends up being a lot thicker uh, kind of skin. You can clearly see it, but uh, if if your grip is slipping, then you need to get more of your thumb under the bar. And of course, the more you put under the bar, initially at least, the more painful it is. So um, you gotta kinda find that balance, shift your thumb in and out until you find the point where it's secure, but uh, you've got a minimum amount of pain. Another question I've got quite a bit is uh, about losing feeling in my fingers or thumb, and uh, I, that has not happened. Uh, I've still got just as much feeling where the bar lays on the thumb as, as uh, on the other side of my thumb. Uh, pretty much the only long-term effect I've had has been nothing in this hand, no problems whatsoever, and this hand just a little bit of uh, uh, something happening in my knuckle, which, uh, like I said, I've just sort of started using straps on the on the down sets, the volume sets, and, and it doesn't seem to be getting any worse, so I think I'm still good to go there. When I first started pulling hook grip, uh, I was having problems with, of course the thumb thing was painful, real painful to begin with, but I was having problems also with uh, uh, basically smashing the end of my thumb to where uh, I was blowing out the end of my thumb. It was bleeding out from under the thumbnails. And once I learned about leaving my thumbnail a little longer, 
Uh, that pretty much, uh, that helped a lot with that. But then another thing that helped to mediate the pain factor and also helped with uh, the uh, blowing out the end of the thumb problem was to tape my thumbs uh, during the adaptation process. So basically all I would do is just get a piece of tape like that, just regular athletic tape and wrap it over the end of my thumb so it has some pressure on the end of my thumb like that and then get two more pieces of tape just take a, a piece and cut it to length and then rip it in half and tape around uh, above the knuckle like that try to help keep that top piece on and then another piece right below the knuckle there like that because that's where the big uh, callus is going to develop. So yeah, that, that, uh, the taping helped a lot with uh, uh, making the pain a little more uh, endurable during the adaptation process, but eventually it got to the point where it was just a uh, pain in the butt because t the tape would be constantly tearing and, and rolling up and, and basically not doing anything anyway, so I just take it off and, and went on. Yeah, when I first started hook gripping, uh, I got so excited about how solid the grip was that uh, pretty much was hook gripping everything. I was hook gripping uh, pull-ups, hook gripping the steering wheel while I was driving, hook gripping dumbbell stuff, uh, hook gripping lever rows, you name it. And um, I think that helped a lot kind of in practicing and, and in adapting. So uh, that's about all I got to say. I hope this video was helpful and it, you, you might have picked something worthwhile up uh, from it and good luck. Reactive Training Systems.